product provided by Nintendo. With the revelation that Super Mario Maker 2 would be the first Mario platformer to feature any kind of cooperative or competitive multiplayer, I got to thinking. I realized that there's quite a bit of yet to be released online multiplayer games that I'm pretty excited for. So what I decided to do is split this video into two halves. The first half will be about games that are currently available. The second half will be about games that are coming soon that I'm pretty sure will be online multiplayer and that I will play a lot of in online multiplayer. So let's get into that. And like always with videos like this on our channel, feel free to let me know what your favorite online multiplayer Switch games are in the comments. It's worth noting that every game I'm going to talk about today requires a Nintendo Switch Online subscription to play online. Luckily for you, Nintendo has been pretty much giving that away and not to just Nintendo brand ambassadors like me. First, and probably the most common solution, is if you have Amazon Prime, you can link your account to Twitch to get three months free that could then later be extended to a year, which stacks for those of you that have already bought into Switch Online via an individual plan. Or you could buy the newly announced Mario Maker 2 Switch Online bundle, which will save you half of the retail price for Switch Online, which, like the previous solution, also stacks. Now that that's out of the way, I'm going to get Super Smash Bros. Ultimate out of the way, since you all know that it's going to be on this list. After all, a lot of you know how I feel about Smash Bros. Ultimate, and my primary way of playing that game has been online, and while it's not perfect, far from it in fact, it gives a lot of ways to interact with the game both against and cooperatively with friends and random people alike. There's a decent amount of choice regardless of whether you prefer to play casually or competitively, with most of my time personally being spent more competitively. It's a good way to get a good understanding of the full roster since you have an infinitely better chance of running into a diverse portion of the roster being played by someone that has a decent understanding of how they work, rather than locally with friends that may play one, maybe two characters really well, but lack that same understanding with the rest of the cast. Which can come in handy on your quest to rack up GSP in quick play mode, which again has problems but is undeniably an addictive system for anyone with a competitive edge. That said, I think the casual side of things fares a lot better in the transition from local to online play. Obviously, a bit of lag wouldn't hinder the fun in casual play as much, so it has that much going for it. Even beyond that, there's a ton of meta games that can be created and enjoyed by thinking of rule sets that center around specific character gimmicks, like Villager V villager tree and pocket only matches or the Ganondorf challenge, all explosive items with the 2.0 launch ratio, Pokeballs and or assist trophies only is a lot of chaotic fun, and again, much more. To expand on this line of thought, player created content via stage creation adds even more ways to play the game for casual players. All of this gives the game limitless playtime for people that enjoy playing, and it's for that reason that I love this game so much to begin with. Duck Game is another four player party game that offers a lot of chaotic fun for up to four players. It's admittedly a time and play sort of thing, meaning I don't play this particular game for hours on end with anyone willing to play like I do a lot of the other games in this video. It's definitely the sort of game that you get to play with a group of friends that you enjoy goofing around with. It's perfect for playing in those gaming sessions full of all-nighter delirium induced fits of laughter, or if you're old enough during a night of drinking with those friends. The WarioWare like split second random game type selection with a variety of stages and weapon types that add to the ways to kill your opponent makes it very hard to feel like you're stuck in a loop of repetition. The game is hilarious with all of those things, its nonsensical hats, the ever important quack button, and the ability to do well this with your tongue. What ties it all up and makes things even better is the fact that Duck Game is by far the cheapest game on this list, coming in at $15 on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Splatoon 2 is a must-have Nintendo Switch game that I feel like I've talked about just as much, if not more, than Super Smash Bros. Ultimate during my time here on YouTube. And that's for good reason. It's an easy recommendation for pretty much anyone. There are several game types that you can play with up to eight friends, including the classic bread and butter, Turf War, ranked modes like Clan Blitz, Tower Control, Splat Zones, and Rainmaker, as well as the cooperative horde mode, Salmon Run, all of which can be played using a respectable amount of weapon types that all offer their own variations with different special and sub weapons that allow for every player to find a loadout that works best for them. Not great at shooters? There's 
use weapons even for you in the form of ink brushes and rollers. A fan of more traditional shooters, you may be a fan of splatter shots, chargers, dualies, and more. All the weapons in the game aren't only versatile enough to fit individual playstyles, but also to fit game types, stages, and team comps. And unlike the first two games that I mentioned, there's an element of customization aesthetically and practically with the sizable selection of clothes and other accessories that can be purchased with money you win in matches. These clothing items all come with their own stat boosting attributes that can be scrubbed away and customized by playing in a lot of matches or in frequent Splatfest competitions which is another online multiplayer achievement that this game boasts. The only real drawback being that it's a bit of a hassle to consistently play on the same team as your friends unless you join them in league battle for ranked modes or you all pick the same team to represent in Splatfest. Despite this though, Splatoon 2 could easily facilitate hundreds of hours of online multiplayer fun and because of that, it's an easy entry for this video. Dragon Ball Fighters is the first anime game that I can honestly say I enjoyed in years. Because unlike most other anime games, it's not solely pinned up by its visual fan service. Arc System Works actually made it a point to make a game that not only looks like Dragon Ball, but also plays not only like Dragon Ball, but a game worth playing completely removed from any love for that IP. This is unheard of as far as I know. You can play both ranked and unranked battles as well as tournaments against random players or friends, or you can play with one friend in 1v1, 2v2, or 3v3 battles as well as up to 6 friends in 3v3 party battles. It's also important to note that Arc System Works has done a great job at supporting this game post launch, already releasing a full set of DLC fighters and are in the process of completing a second set of fighter DLC, something that Smash fans can only hope will be done when the ultimate dev team wraps on the current fighter pass for that game. Dragon Ball Fighters is a game that I would recommend to any Dragon Ball fan in a heartbeat, and for the first time ever for an anime IP related video game, any fighting game fan. Pokémon Tournament Deluxe is a game that, as a Pokémon fan, I've wanted for most of my life. It's a competent arena fighter developed by Bandai Namco, with the interesting spin of switching between the perspective of a 3D fighter to a 2D one. And obviously, you get to play with the selection of the most popular Pokemon ranging from Gen 1 to Generation 7. You can play this game with randoms in an admittedly poorly thought out rank mode or unranked, as well as with friends like the other games in this video. But unlike those games, there's not a whole lot of variety in how you do that beyond the Pokemon you can use, I guess. This game is definitely lacking in mode, so if I had to point out a shortcoming, that would be it. And of course, the deluxe subtitle makes it clear that this game is yet another Wii U port, which despite almost certainly not owning a Wii U may be a turnoff for some, but it's the gold standard for Wii U ports in the sense that it's been supported with post-launch DLC partner and support Pokemon. Even Super Mario Party, a Switch game that came out a year later and has sold millions more units, hasn't seen that level of support, which is consistent with what I said about Dragon Ball Fighters. Come to think of it, Bandai Namco does a lot of great work for Nintendo Switch. Props. As for the games coming out later this year, it's a bit of a mixed bag what they have to offer in the online play realm. We don't know much, but what we do know is that we can expect all of these games to have some form of online play based on pre-existing trailers, games in the franchise that have been released previously, or just flat out confirmation from developers. Being the original catalyst for this video, it's only right that I spend more time talking about Super Mario Maker 2. Like I mentioned, I did not expect to be able to play this game in online multiplayer at all, let alone with up to four friends competitively or cooperatively. The amount of level design possibilities available makes this game a no-brainer for any Mario fan already, so knowing that you can enjoy most of that with a friend or three makes it an even easier sell. It has yet to be seen if latency will hinder the experience at all, I'd imagine that was a concern for Nintendo, otherwise I'm not entirely sure why it took them this long to implement it into a Mario game. At any rate, it's a welcome addition, and I personally can't wait to play this game online on streams with Bob from the Wolf Den and Dan from that cyber channel and also Parker I guess. I'll be getting my hands on Super Mario Maker 2 on June 28th 2019.
you should too. Marvel Ultimate Alliance is a series of games that I don't have a whole lot of experience with. Up until recently, my comic exposure was limited mostly to Spider-Man and the Japanese side of things with manga. But the MCU is a thing that happened, so my desire to engage with comic book content has drastically increased, and it's no secret that I'm not alone in that. I'm excited to play through the game's story with a group of friends and see what team comps we'll all gravitate toward. The cooperative nature of the game seems to be well thought out, with stat boosts being given depending on how a set of heroes would interact in universe, which I'd imagine adds a ton of replayability. So I'm excited to pick up Marvel Ultimate Alliance when it releases exclusively on Nintendo Switch on July 19th, 2019. Ninjala basically looks to be a melee combat focused Splatoon clone, which sign me up. Even beyond that, it has its own combat twist being the bubblegum mechanic that has the risk reward of increasing stats while the bubble is big, while putting you at risk of it being popped and leaving you in a vulnerable state. There's said to be multiple game types with only two to my knowledge being revealed as of the date of this video's release, and I'm sure we'll learn more at E3 next month. Speaking of learning more, the last two games I want to talk about we know next to nothing about in regards to online beyond past games and their franchises. But I'll go out on a limb and say that Pokemon Sword and Shield and Animal Crossing on Nintendo Switch will both have some sort of support for online multiplayer. And whatever support they do offer based on previous entries will be more than enough for me to recommend that you pick these up as a fan of online multiplayer. These of course aren't the only online multiplayer Switch games. Some games like Diablo 3 or Fortnite have been left out because they're not exactly my cup of tea. And another obvious entry, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, was left out because I wanna make another video focusing heavily on that game specifically. Like I said, if you can think of any online multiplayer Switch games that you think deserve the title of the best of the best on the platform, leave them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and click like and share it with a friend that you would like to play these online multiplayer games with or maybe one of the ones that the people in the comments are suggesting. Most importantly, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell for more videos like this every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. The bell part turns out it's pretty important because YouTube doesn't really care about the subscribe button as much. So if you like these videos, Go ahead, click the bell. Okay, that's it for me. See you next week.